Hey, Peter. Hey, Adam. Uh, I don't sound good. You, I don't, I don't agree with that. Your voice or your uh, just in general. You got really? any advice for that? Uh, posture. Oh, interesting. Yeah, posture. I'm Adam Mess. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear Podcast. Daily jazz advice coming at you. Coming at you from the pod cave at Open Studio headquarters because we are brought to you by Open Studio. Go to openstudiojazz.com to check out our brand new platform. Have you checked it out yet? Um, I've seen it. I'm familiar with it and I've checked it out and I'm loving it. As McDonald's <laughs> would say, keep on frying. And um, yeah. <laughs> Um, no, it's it's wonderful. Yeah, you just tell McDonald's food. to keep on frying. I, trying, I mean, that's what they do, right? It's fried food, man. French fries. Oh, good French gravy. Fries. Good gravy. Um, we have a we have a little saying in the plant based community: like, don't be a uh, uh, what do you call it? Junk food vegan. Like, you can go to McDonald's and eat French fries only and yeah. be plant based. Hashtag plant based. But don't do that. We don't yeah, recommend. Yeah, we it. have a saying in uh, the keto community, which is <laughs> two more quarter pounders, no bun. <laughs> two more quarter. Do it, mas. <laughs> Uh, good. So today we're going negative a little bit, but we're going to flip it into a positive because we're going to tell you seven things not to do for a good sound. Yeah, we were inspired by our friend Chris McBride's video that he made for us called Your Sound is Your Signature. Andrew, right. can you put a link to Your Sound is Your Signature two-minute jazz That's on here? That's our award-winning multiple hundred thousand. No, winning. we might be up to millions of views on Facebook and YouTube. It's um, It's got people love it. Two quite a, a, a following, and it's really just the coolest thing to see. Chris, well, first of all, he's playing while he's talking. He's walking yeah. this killer bass line. And he's talking about things not to do on the bass to get a good sound. Because the bass, notoriously, people try all kinds of things to yeah. get his sound specifically. Because he's exactly. got such a beautiful, big this, sound. Right? Yeah. they always like, oh, it must be the bass. But I've heard him play on a lot of different basses. Yeah. Um, I mean, just like basses that were... We just did a gig in St. Lucia, and they had like a bass from the island there that actually wasn't horrible, but it was like... He still sounded like the same. Yeah. But the cool thing on that too is he's talking about things not to do from a bass, you know, for bass yeah. players. And even when he does them, he still kind of sounds good. Uh, so yeah. he kind of cr- contradicts himself a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Someone in one of the comments was like, "Step one: have massive hands." Like <laughs> Christian McBride, I think that helps, right? Right, right? But I thought, you know, maybe this could be relevant to uh, piano players as yeah. well. I mean, I know it is because I see, and I, I don't know about you, but. Sometimes I'll see um, sort of intermediate level pianists who are doing things and I'm like, oh, bro, if you could just fix that, like tweak that yeah. one thing, you would yeah. have so much more either control or, or just a better, rounder sound. Yeah, I, I love that. I'm so glad that you came up with this topic today because I love the premise of it. The, the premise is needed. And look, this is we're talking about mostly pianists. A few of these things apply to everybody, though. Yeah. But yeah, this we is, are pianists. We are pianists. Yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, but. Pianists do not think about, we don't think about, practice, concentrate, talk about our sound nearly enough. Like bass players are always talking about that. Man, did you yeah, hear it sound? It, totally. Like we're always like, man, did you hear that voicing? Man, did you hear that Herbie line, dude? You know. It, you're right. It's underappreciated. Underappreciated. In the community. Under, yeah. Um, so I think that, you know, just thinking about what not to do uh, is important because, and then we need to get onto some of the what, what to do. But, but like a lot of these sort of technical challenges that have a direct uh, contribution and corollary to our musicianship mm. learning what not to do can really open up doors like that's what i really learned from christian in that video because it's like no tell me what to do as soon as you stop doing some of those things it's like wow you actually have a good sound there that's right you're doing things that are keeping your sound from coming out and it's pianos because it's such an easy instrument to like physically just sit down and play a note or even play a triad i mean think about it you could treat you could teach anybody with hands to play a C triad in about 10 seconds. What other, you know, how long would that take on a bass to be able to play a C triad even, you know, first of all, you can't really do it. No. I mean, you can, but you, that's very advanced, you know. So we, there's always this assumption that it's easy to get a good sound. So let's, t- let's kick it off with number one. Can I take this one? You got it. Okay. Number one is don't listen. Okay. Now this is a little confusing. So let me rephrase <laughs> the, the topic here because we're going double negative. Seven things not to do for a good sound. So don't, don't listen. So basically listen. Yeah, listen. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. No, if you're not listening to your sound, especially if you pra- after, as you practice, yeah, it's not gonna be good. I know, and this seems easy and simple and funny, but it's true. I mean, you have to listen. And I like practice what you said. I mean, we listen all the time, but if you only wait until you're performing on the greatest piano at Carnegie Hall, 
to start listening, you're not going to be able to get a good sound. So you better start listening at your crappy little chickering. At yeah. Home. Well, and one thing we've been doing more of here at Open Studio, OpenStudioJazz.com, yeah. is these guided practice routines. And yeah. in them, you know, uh, we kind of set them up by saying, this is your opportunity to listen for your sound. And really, that's all you should be listening for when you're doing the technical exercise. That's right. If Simplify and isolate. Yeah. It definitely you, applies here. If you're running scales, you know, after three or four times, you probably know all the notes. That's right. And you probably are close to having the fingering pretty much by rote yeah. after, you know, three or four sessions, let's say. You have it by rote because when you first started learning it, you wrote it down, right? Okay. Okay. Hold on. But if you're an exper especially if you're an experienced player who maybe knows already how to play, you know, your scales. Yeah. When you practice scales, the real uh, purpose of that practice is to pay attention to your sound. You yeah. have to listen to how everything sounds, how even you are, how in control of the dynamics you are. Yeah. How light is it? How heavy is it? How That's staccato? Right. How legato? Like you have to make these decisions and that is the time to work on it. And when you talk about practicing skills, you want to make sure you are not, you want to be doing it enough so that you do not feel like you're a fish out of water when you're practicing scales. Fish out of Oh Let my gosh. I got jet lag. Sorry, oh, it'll get better. Wow. It'll get better. I'm trying to get Andrew. Nope, he's not laughing. No, not no, laughing. Okay, so that was number one. He's What's actively frowning. Actually, <laughs> he's just totally yeah. distraught and bored. Okay, number two. Okay, number two is uh, of things to uh, things not to do for a good sound, and that is use a ton of sustain. Can I can I can I clap for this? Yes. No, I'm not clapping for using a ton. I'm clapping for not using. Not using. Yeah. yeah, if you don't want to sound good, use a ton of sustain. Yeah. Uh, I get this uh -huh. a lot. Anytime I take on any live student, which actually isn't that much anymore, but whenever I do, it's usually the first thing I have to say is like, why is your foot on the sustain pedal? Yeah. Why are you playing so much sustain on everything? That's right. Why is every phrase uh, sound like it's underwater? You know yeah. what I mean? The sustain pedal is used as a uh, an accentuation right. and a crutch and can be a crutch <laughs> no but i mean if you want to get a really great sound you need to develop a legit legato and to exactly. develop a legit legato you have to learn how to keep your one finger down while moving to another finger and to do that you have to tie your foot to the piano bench exactly if, if that's what you have to do do it yeah because i promise you you will get a better sound in just a couple of weeks if you practice without the sustain things we have never said Wow, you have such a great sound, and and your overuse of the sustain pedal really contributed nicely to it. <laughs> it's so true. If you are using the sustain pedal pretty much at all yeah. while you're practicing, it's not good. Things uh, things that I've never said also was like, wow, I listened back to that recording of myself. I wish I'd use more sustain pedal. Never. <laughs> never. 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 All right. All right, number three. This is uh, number three of our list of things not to do for a good sound, and that is to get real excited and tighten up. Yeah. So, yeah, when we get excited or nervous or um, anything that would cause tension, fearful, um, I, but I think you're even talking about even in a positive way. No, anything I think like a lot of people try to put energy in by tightening up or get, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, stank face or whatever. Stank face. You know what I'm saying? Well, stank face leads to good sound occasionally. <laughs> <but. laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So we want to really, and I think this is about, you know, I mean, look, when you get into the flow of a gig and stuff, who knows what's going to happen. But especially for when you're practicing, it's a really good time to make sure that our physical skills are developed and, and those good habits are in place so that we're putting ourselves in the best position to make a great sound. Yeah. Because it's a lot, it's a technical challenge. Like once you really start listening and stop using the pedal, I mean, if you do number one and two, number three, you're going to have to do. Because when you listen and let go of that pedal, you're, then you're going to start to be exposed. That's right. You're going to be like, whoa. And so if you get, if you tighten up and stuff, that's going to come out even more. Like it, with the sustain pedal, a lot of this can be covered up and you yeah. can be stank face and it tighten up and it's going to sound. Well, but you're not going to sound great though. No, you're not going to sound great. And you know what? If, if you're out there and you're saying, well, what about Keith Jarrett? What about Oscar Peterson? Hello. They are relaxed from about the shoulder down. Yeah. You can, and you know how I can tell? Because they sound great. <laughs> exactly. Like if Oscar Peterson is going, is doing his like uh, uh, thing right. that he kind of gets into, whatever, I guarantee you that his hands and his wrists and his elbows and his shoulders are relaxed. He's doing that. He wouldn't be able to do it without it. There's no way. You, he would sound, he would tighten up. I wonder if we should change this to seven things not to do for a great sound. Oh, should we? No, no, it. I don't know. I'm not I'm, trying to. No, I'm doing it right now. Care. Well, the other thing about that, you're talking about I'm Oscar capitalizing Peterson. capitalizing every letter. <laughs> um, Keith Jarrett and Oscar Peterson. The other thing is like, if you, if you think that they're um, tightened up and stuff when they're playing and you want to do that, that's fine. As soon as you sound as good as them in your own way, then you can tighten up. No problem. All right. <laughs> All right. Number four is don't use voicing. 
not voicings. Right. You want to use voicing. Yeah. And again, we're double negativing here, so I'm confusing myself. So even. don't don't use voicing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The seven things not to do for a great sound. Yeah. So by this we mean like it, and I mean, I think that there's there's a lot of different things. There's voicings, there's the voicing, voice leading and all this stuff. But in terms of voicing is like playing uh, several notes at the same time and playing them all the same would be not using voicing. Absolutely. We want to voice out the certain melodies. And, and, and really next level on this is to be able to play each of the different notes with the different fingers in a different way. Absolutely. Different volume, different kind of sound. That's what gives the piano just a, a beautiful complex sound and we typically look at classical pianos and like horowitz vladimir i'd be referring to the uh, russian brother yeah. um you know he i think one of his great abilities and look they're playing classical music that's written so they can kind of plan this out and practice it but his ability to voice out with all of his different fingers these beautiful lines all at the same time it's basically sounded like however many melodies and chords were going on separate people playing it in their own way but beautifully each one absolutely of them. that's next level absolutely and, and the easy way to practice this is Let's say you're playing some kind of uh, solo piano arrangement of whatever standard you want. Just make the melody note that's on top of your chords louder than what's underneath them. Yeah. That's like level one. That's level one. Exactly. And then you can try to make that the loudest thing and maybe the bass line, the lowest note, the yeah. root, second loudest, and the chord in the middle third loudest right, right then we're getting into more things but man i'll tell you what if i'm on a really nice piano and i'm playing a d minor 11 chord and it's kind of clustered Ooh. in the middle I'm oh, bringing out on. that g all day long that's right, you know right. What I'm saying? well plus when we want to avoid we talk about voicing out the melody which is often at the top sometimes in the middle sometimes at the bottom that's right but if it's at the top and you're getting a, like a big thick d minor 11 or, or, or whatever uh, is happening if you're not voicing out that melody and sublimating those other with a different kind of sound yeah. that melody is not going to be able to be heard and voiced out exactly especially right. if you start you know clobbering the poor old sustain pedal totally you know what sound we're talking about it just sounds like there's so many notes happening sounds like you know it sounds like hot doo-doo on a hot oh summer gosh. st louis sidewalk but when you hear a great pianist who's experienced at doing doing this it sounds like ice cream cone uh, that hot doo has been turned into a beautiful Ted Drew's frozen custard. Ooh, I like it. And we call that doo-doo custard. <laughs> no, okay, okay, number five. But, but yet we digress. Number five. Yes. Uh, if you want to sound like total doo-doo, <laughs> then you should be moving your wrists slash elbows slash shoulders a whole bunch. Right, right, right. Lots of random, and you know, the corollary for this with <laughs> Christian McBride was, what he called it? The, the, the chicken the, wing. The chicken wing. Yeah. He's like, don't be doing the chicken wing when you're all in and out, you know. But it's like economy of motion, not yeah. tight. No. But economy of motion so that all of the energy can be put into the instrument to produce the great sound that oh, we're trying man. to do. Go look up, uh, uh, who am I thinking about? Oh, Peter Martin. Go look up YouTube videos of Peter Martin playing some, some fast eighth note passages, and you'll see just this beautiful, very still hand-wrist combination. Really, you're not, going, you're not pronating, you're yeah. not... Uh, what's the other one? Prenating. Prenating. <laughs> Pre -pre There's prenatal. a lot of prenatal care in my playing, I can tell <laughs> no, you. No, but it's all very even, all very relaxed. And that is, I think, that'll tell you all you need to know. That you can get this big snap of a sound without having to really like lean in or roll or whatever kind of BS that you might be doing. So if we want to, yeah, if we want to think about like a chicken running across, like a chicken with the wings running across randomly. We don't want that. No. But maybe a kitty cat. You know how they have those great cat YouTube videos just prancing. Elegant. No, we're not, okay, we don't want that either. Okay, okay. let's move on. Uh, number six. Number six. Um, okay, don't do this if you want to sound, have a great sound. Um, practice at the same dynamic level all the time. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah. Play, you, you, we need to, I oh, mean. man. It, it, I just it, like it, to stay in a nice mezzo forte. Oh, <laughs> mezzo forte, you're killing me. So, yeah, just because you can play with a great sound at mezzo forte, what yeah. happens when you need to, like, you know, play with some phrasing and bring out a line and go up and down, play like quietly. Do doo-doo on the ground. That's right. And the, the technique that is required to play with a great sound at different volume levels at the piano is not just as easy as pushing harder. Right. That's like basic level. That's right. So they have to be all be practiced. They have to be controlled. And it's just as important. It's like, I mean, think about trumpet players or saxophone players or vocalists, how much time they spend at different volume levels trying to develop their sound and how different the technique is. It's the same thing with the piano, different technique, yeah. but it's actually just as challenging. And just know? as important. Just as important. And again, I think because there's this myth that playing the piano is just like button pushing. Right. You know, that we think we can get away with this, that if we know I am enough. A computer. Right, that if we gather enough information, we'll be good. But that's not right. how it works at all. Like you Info have to work in on equals sound out. And we get a lot of emails just like that about right. like 
if I just acquire enough information, how I play it isn't as important, but it's right. actually way more important than you're giving credit Hells to. So yeah. learn how to play with dynamics and practice that. When you're practicing scales, practice your scales at pianissimo. At pianissimo. Right. Practice them as softly as you can get them. Practice them as loudly as you can make them. That's right. All that's important. All right. Uh, why don't you give us number seven, and then we, we actually, I think we do have a bonus for the, for the end of the episode, we do. but go ahead. Uh, number seven is to comp for yourself without dynamics. Oof. So still in the same dynamic kick, kind of, kind of in the same realm as you were talking about voicing yeah. but when you are comping for yourself when you're soloing or maybe even playing a, a melody and you're comping for yourself at a i hear this all the time at a very loud level right you know what i mean learn how to comp at a different dynamic than what your melodic content is absolutely uh if you were comping for someone hopefully you're not just throwing your hands at the keyboard as hard as you can like a brick and and playing as loudly as you can you have to learn how to control your left hand and make it a different dynamic level than what you're trying to bring out, which is the melody. Yeah. And it doesn't always have to be like that if you're wanting to to bring it out, but make sure that you, that's your decision, that you have control over that and you're not just doing it because you're excited or, you know, and especially like if you're building tension or building dynamically with your right hand, that yeah. doesn't mean that your left hand has to go with you in that regard. No, absolutely not. Um, great. Well, we hope you enjoyed that. That was our seven... Um, Things not to do for a great sound. So don't get it twisted and do these seven things. Do not do these things. Am I getting that correctly? You are totally correct in that, okay. sir. Am I not not correct? You are, you are, yes, you are, yes, not, yes, incorrect. you are not incorrect. Good. Got it. Got it. <laughs> All right. Well, um, what do we have to talk about today? Oh, you know what I was thinking during this actually would be nice. Our sponsor, our official sponsor is Open Studio. And uh, we have a new course actually for beginning. We say novice pianist, but it's really just for all, what we would say is like kind of an ultra beginner, beginner, beginner to jazz. An ultra maybe, beginner, beginner, beginner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you, you know, have some good, great classical chops, but you're interested in jazz. We want to invite you over because this month we just launched it and we've had so many great folks from around the world. Hundreds have signed up already and are enjoying Jumpstart Jazz, which is kind of your or our baby. But, no, you, yeah, you know, and the guided practice, which could work out very nicely, as you alluded to, for working on your sound. As well. Yeah, I, we, we do the guided practice. We talk a lot about working on your sound in the guided practice. And those are practice routines, video practice routines where you're practicing with me four times a week for seven weeks. Eesh. And I, <laughs> it sounds awful, but it's going to get you playing great. That's right. And we go over scales and tunes and voicings and all sorts of things in those practice routines. And you have no excuse as to, I don't know what to practice because I'm telling you literally play this. And well, you, they could have some excuses. I let's, mean, not, let's not be so dumb. We're trying to take all the excuses away. Right. But check it out. It's been really popular, man. We've sold a lot of these things. Yeah, we have. Not, ah. I should have made it better. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> no, it's great. And you, the cool thing about the, the Jazz Piano Jumpstart, too, is that we made it kind of you'll hear it style. Like yes. we're just kind of uh, doing it like this, but right. at the piano and with a little more intent behind it. That's right. And a workbook and transcriptions and practice routines yep. and quizzes and a whole bunch of other features. Go to Jazz Piano Jumpstart. Wait, go to you'll <laughs> hear No, go to Open, open Studio wait, Jazz. Go to Amazon.com. No. <laughs> where, where are they going? They're going to um, OpenStudioJazz.com. Yeah, OpenStudioJazz.com slash just just go there and then go it. to piano courses. You'll see it. Jump start. Jazz piano jump start. Until tomorrow. <laughs> well, we have our bonus. Oh, we gotta give our bonus. That's right. What do we got? Uh, so the bonus, this is something to do. If you want a great sound, something that you can do oh, uh, right. today to work on that is to whenever you're practicing, whether that's scales or tunes yeah. or anything. Practice getting an even sound across all your fingers on both of your hands. Ooh, nice. I don't want to hear your thumb is way heavier. I don't right. want to hear your fourth finger and your left hand is way weaker. No, we will take a ruler to that hand if we hear that. The way to do this is simple. Listen. Listen yes. to when, play a C major scale and then listen to where the notes are weaker than the others or where they might be stronger than the others and then adjust and, and be honest with yourself. Then play evenness, a, so important. Evenness is the most great important. sound at, at, at the, at the piano. The control of the evenness is important. Play yep. the C major scale, see what you can hear. Then play the B major scale, see what you can hear. Right. Play the C major scale, see what you can uh, hear. Play the B major scale, be what you can hear. How about that? And until tomorrow, you'll hear it.